What's happening, folks? Welcome back to Celtic Fans TV. It's time for the starting 11 prediction for tomorrow's trip to Firth Park to face Motherwell. First of all, I hope everybody's recovered from Wednesday night. What a night it was. Um, an absolute demolition of Rangers 3 0. I think before the game, most people thought if we were going to win it, it would be a narrow, hard fought victory. But we absolutely blew Rangers away and reflecting on it. It's one of the best experiences I've ever had at Celtic Park or at any any football match. Um, certainly following Celtic for the best part of 15, 20 years. That is going to be a standout night for me. It was just absolutely amazing for start to finish. Um, and obviously, now we're top of the table. It gives us a big opportunity in this game tomorrow because we're playing first to go four points clear before Rangers play Hearts at four o'clock tomorrow. Pile the pressure on them. Um and let us be the leaders now. I think for most of the season, when we've been second, Rangers have played first a lot and the pressure's always been on us, so it'll be nice to see the shoe on our foot now and us have the opportunity um, to keep the pressure on them and, and try and build on that lead that we've now got at the top of the table. It's just brilliant to look at the league table and see Celtic sitting back on top of it and it's fully deserved after the run that we've been on, but also that performance the other night because, as I say, we blew Rangers away. Muller will come into this one with two draws, two defeats and one victory for the last five in all competitions. In the league, they've only had one win in the last five. Despite that, they're still sitting fourth, though, on 33 points. Um, Far Park always a tough place to go, of course. Um, we've seen that over the years. We did play well the last time there. Uh, this season, though, got a comfortable victory in the end. So I expect the same again if we go with that level of performance from Wednesday night. Um, as long as we can keep that and there's no sort of hangover because the players did put a lot into that game on Wednesday. If we can perform at a similar level, um, I expect us to win the game tomorrow. And as I say, open up that four-point gap before Rangers play later in the day. So we'll start in goals, as we always do with Joe Hart. Um, didn't have too many saves to make, unlike his opposite number on Wednesday. But the most important in intervention he had in the game was was diving at Arfield's feet just before the second goal. Um, that was a massive moment for a second that looked like Arfield was going to get in. But he was really brave um, and he's he's been brilliant. Joe Hart, we've talked about this all throughout the first half of the season. Um, he's been an excellent addition for us. At right back, I fully expect, I mean, a lot of people's man of the match, Josip Juranovic, to keep his place. He was absolutely brilliant the other night. Probably his, his best game in a Celtic jersey so far. Flawless defensively. Um, so quick. Ryan Kent's been a danger for us in these derbies for the last couple of years. There's no getting away for that. And he was a threat the other night. Um, it was as dangerous as anything Rangers had on the pitch the other night. But Josip Juranovic dealt with him with ease. He was absolutely terrific. Um, one of the best fullback performances I've seen at Celtic um, for a long, long time. So he'll keep his place. I expect the centre-half pairing to stay as well, who again the other night were brilliant. Um, another clean sheet, comfortably the best defence in the league. I talked about it in the Twitter reaction. Um, it's time they got the respect they were due, the respect they deserve from the performances they're putting in, and I don't expect any changes to the back four tomorrow, given how we played the other night. It's really, really important for the team that the, the back five, I think, is as consistent as possible because it lets them build um, build the relationship, develop, and <laughs> build on those clean sheets, hopefully, and, and just um, give the team that foundation to go forward. Um, so I think it will be tailored at left back. And talking to fullbacks, that had their, their best performance in a Celtic jersey. I think Taylor probably had that the other night as well. Um, really interesting to see after the game that I think he had the most, uh, he won the most duels, made the most interceptions and the most tackles. Um, the other night, he was he was brilliant. And that is an area of weakness that people have p uh, pinpointed recently. But no complaints about Greg Taylor the other night. He was really, really good. So he'll keep his place as well, I believe. In the midfield, Callum McGregor played with a mask on, put in a captain's performance, sacrificed himself for the team. He was superb all night. I think tomorrow, though, he's going to be rested. Um, if he is going to have this surgery on his face, I don't know when that's going to be scheduled for. We've obviously got some big games coming up. Pataudry, um during the week, and then the, the European football starts back up against Bodo Glimt. So we've got big games coming up, but I think tomorrow... Given the uh, exertions uh, Wednesday night, I think Beaton will come back in and play in that deep midfield position. In front of him, Matt O'Reilly, who was terrific the other night, another brilliant performance uh, from him. There's been so much demanded of Matt O'Reilly since he's come in the door. Um, he's played in three really big games, 
three pivotal games. Uh, you think about that game at Tynecastle, his debut, then a really important late win against Dundee United, and obviously the Derby win the other night. Um, there's been a lot demanded of him, and I think fitness-wise, he's tired late in games, but that hasn't affected his performance. Interesting to hear the manager say the other night that he's actually he'd gone into that game with a slight injury, um, and the manager didn't know how he was going to fare. But as I say, he was brilliant. I just think tomorrow is an opportunity to maybe start him on the bench and bring Tom Rogic back in. He's back from international duty um, and he was playing really well. And it's it's great to have this situation now where you look at the team and you think, who do you drop out of that team? Because everybody's performing brilliantly this last uh, 10 days, two weeks when, when we've missed these big players with international duty. Um, a lot of guys have stepped up. Matt O'Reilly, Hatati coming in as new players have grabbed their opportunity with both hands. So that's going to give the manager a nice headache. It's going to give us depth. It's going to give him options on the bench to change the game, um, to rotate players, to rest players, whatever he needs to do. We haven't had that depth enough this season. Um, and that is encouraging because that means we should get stronger as we, we gear up towards the end of the season. So I think Rogic will come back in. O'Reilly can be an option on the bench um, and he can just get a well-deserved rest because, as I say, since he's walked in the door, um, there's been a lot demanded of him. Alongside Rogic, Rio Hitati, uh, man of the match the other night. What a performance uh, for your Derby debut. Two beautiful goals. Um, the first one, I think, having seen it back now, takes a slight nick. But the second was a pick of the bunch for me. To curl it round Goldson and McGregor in at the near post. And then the Maravchik-esque celebration um, to just turn around and watch the pandemonium unfold in the stands. And for him to be mobbed by his teammates. It was brilliant. Aside from the goals... He had a really, really important intervention um, when Rangers were countering. He chased back with Ryan Kent 60, 70 yards. He was rapid. Um, he got there in front of Kent and shielded the ball out for a goal kick. Um, as I said last week, he's got everything, everything in his locker for a midfield player. And he looks like an unbelievable signing for us. So I think he'll keep his place. Another man that I expect to keep his place on the right-hand side is Leo Abada. I need to say, we went through a period down about late September, October, November, of criticising Abada because while the goals were still there, his all-round performance uh, wasn't quite brilliant. But the last few weeks he's been superb. It looks like he's turned a corner almost. Um, I don't know if something's clicked for him. But he's so dangerous again. And the other night, running at the fullback, Barisic was terrified in that first half. Um, and that's something I want to see more of from him because he can be so, so dangerous. And once again, with that third goal, um, he's so good at that he's so good at sensing danger sensing when there's going to be a goal scoring opportunity making that dart and run inside the box and as we've seen he can finish that's 13 goals this season um, he's becoming a big player for his Lila Bada and as I say I'm delighted with his form in the last last two or three weeks he just looks like a different player um, and if he can keep taking on fullbacks the way he did on Wednesday night they will dread playing against them and, and that's brilliant for us on the other flank I fully expect Jota to keep his place. He was good the other night. Um, didn't get on the score sheet, but he was a constant threat. Um, we really pinned Rangers back in those full-back areas. A lot of talk about how under Van Bronckhorst, the, the Rangers full-backs don't get forward as much. But they barely got their defensive third in that first half. Um, Jota was really, really good. And having equally dangerous players on both flanks um, means that we don't need to be one-dimensional. We've got different threats. They're different players, Jota and Abada, but I thought the both of them the other night were superb. Um, and if they can keep up that form, that's all the better for us. The only other change to the team, I think, will come through the middle, and I think Dyson Maida will start this game. I think he'll bring us a fresh energy up front. I think Jakumak has put in a good effort the other night um, off the back of his performance against Dundee United, which I was really critical of. He did put in another good shift. Could have had a hat-trick right enough in the first half. Um, McGregor made a few good saves from him. But I think Maeda, when he came on the other night, you could see he had a few wee bursts and then you could see that he tired and that's understandable, um, having literally just stepped off a long haul flight from Japan a few hours earlier. So I think he'll start this game tomorrow for us. As I say, a fresh energy. Um, he'll, he'll give us a different dynamic going forward from what we've had in recent weeks with Jaku Makis. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing that front three play together because Maeda looked good in those uh early couple of appearances but then he's been away with Japan so um, I'm looking forward to seeing him get a run in the team because Kyogo it looks like is going to be out for another few weeks at least so um, it'll be good to see Maeda get a run of games 
and really see what he can do. So there you go, that's the team I think the manager will pick for the game tomorrow. Like this video, comment with your own thoughts below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you tomorrow at Fur Park for all of the full-time reaction. Cheers.